Yo, YouTube, what's going on? It's your boy, Savage Elite. We are back with another video, guys. And today, man, what in the world? There is one week left in the season before Call of Duty Champs, and an insane event just went down. Dallas set a new record this weekend, and the MVP race is definitely heating up. So there's a ton to talk about, and I am really, really excited to talk about it. Statistically, it was the best, most dominant run for any team in any tournament and they made a statement going into the biggest tournament of the year so far and of course you've got to talk about why octane absolutely went off on twitter this weekend and roasted the cdl so let's go through this weekend and real quick i've got to thank the sponsor of this video midnight they allow you to level up your esports betting and they make esports betting just really 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 easy there's tons of different types of odds that you can bet whether it's just a straight up win or loss or a certain map count or many other things you can parlay and do a lot of different things so it's a ton of fun and it definitely increases the esports watching experience so right now they're doing a bet 25 get five deal that i would definitely recommend taking advantage of and i would really appreciate it if you use code salvation to support myself and the channel as a whole so last week with the odds i mean overall i think when we talked about on the podcast and talked about in the power rankings video some of those bets were pretty good overall if i say so myself and imagine how much cash you could have made if you would have bet on paris i mean you literally might be a millionaire by now who knows but i really really do appreciate midnight for supporting the channel they've been awesome to work with and i cannot more highly recommend that you go check them out support them and throw down a few bets on some cod matches because what's more fun than that of course the link is down in the description you can go check that out and use coach salvation Again, I really do appreciate that. I mean, all things considered, this might have been the craziest, wildest weekend of the whole year with how this went down with the shocking run that Paris made this weekend. Like, bro, what in the world? Who would have saw that coming? I don't believe that one person genuinely believed that Paris would make a final. Maybe you're like Australian and you're like, oh yeah dude paris is making the finals but it's gonna be insane it's gonna be so funny maybe you are literally from paris and you're like you know what that would be crazy if paris made the final i bet it's gonna happen no but you didn't actually believe it obviously no one did because they have been pretty bad obviously really their only wins have come against la gorillas they beat them in the second round here so we were all like nah man it ain't happening no chance and then out of just pure madness it ends up going down so let's talk about it i mean the weekend started off with what ended up being the grand final the first match of the whole weekend was dallas versus paris it ended up being a 3-1 dallas took it home Paris looked really, really good in search and destroys, like basically this whole weekend. And that was the one map they won. I mean, in the first map, they got absolutely smoked. They lost 250 to 73 on Ramaza hardpoint. And at that point, everyone was like, well, there you go. Paris absolutely sucks. And Dallas is looking pretty good already. I mean, if you would have put money on Paris right after that match, I couldn't imagine the puny betting odds you would have got. Betting on Paris to make the finals after that hardpoint map because it was ugly and after the search and destroy dallas took care of business in the dominant hardpoint and moved on to beat paris 3-1 so then the second match of the weekend was debatably the most controversial map of the whole weekend it was seattle versus london royal ravens and it was all going to queue so nothing crazy was going on the first three maps it was a 2-1 going into the hard point on petro and after the first few hills during the listening you hear seattle go like yo i think jerry's lagging out on the left side tracks yeah, i think i holding water oh, we gotta kill dylan jerry's lagging out i think i feel the roof does and slacked ends up lagging out of the map which is an absolutely big deal obviously they put it out which is what you have to do in the rules and then after the match they ruled that Seattle had to forfeit the map because Slack lagged out, which of course, again, decided the series 3-1 for London and sent down to the loser's bracket. Then, And Octane then went off on Twitter. Like, this was pure rage on Twitter. Obviously, throwing every taking every shot he could in just a thread of tweets. And we all know what happened. Of course, he ends up getting fined. It is a terrible situation. And I'm sure we're going to talk more about this on the podcast. But at the same time, like, you know, it puts the league into a tough spot. The end-all, be-all situation that, that needs to be there is there needs to be an in-game pause feature so that if somebody disconnects, you can press pause on the lobby, the lobby actually pauses, and they can fix any problem they have, and they can have players rejoin instead of forcing Slack to forfeit because both sides have good points here. If you're the CDL, you don't want to make yourself vulnerable and potentially be able to let players just unplug their Ethernet cords and disconnect from the lobby or turn off their router you know and lose internet connection for whatever reason during matches but on the other hand from the player's perspective it's like 
yo this literally was not our fault this was some random glitch with his internet like what are we supposed to do this literally was not our fault at all and you're making us suffer because of this so from the player's perspective of course it absolutely sucks and there really isn't a good middle ground in my opinion it shouldn't be like a black and white rule like it shouldn't be like a, okay every time a player disconnects this means that they're forfeiting you know it should be decided by the league the motivation should be a factor as well like did seattle have any reason to disconnect they were winning the match why would they disconnect if they were winning you know in those situations so that made no sense in my opinion it should have been a replay because seattle had no reason to disconnect it's not like they didn't have spawns it's not like they were losing it's not like it was really late in the game obviously slacked wasn't trying to scam the system here and it's slacked he's been around forever there's a lot of reasons for why you know you should be able to trust the players here on this one and give them the replay and of course i'm sure london would have been totally understanding of that but instead they forced him to play him out and make him forfeit which is just a terrible situation overall and put seattle into a really really tough spot then new york took care of quick business with the la gorillas 3-0 in them no surprise there and then we went into a really big match between the mutineers and optic where the mutineers finally barely barely took care of business 3-2 against optic even with the new roster of draza and hollow i mean optic looked improved even in this match and they took florida to the wire in this series i mean it was on piccadilly they were up five to four all they had to do was win one of those last two rounds they couldn't make it happen of course this was an intense round 11 so you know what we like doing around here let's check it out tj now in a very very precarious position but it's going to be Andraza. dead silence activated he's managed to get to the very back end of the shop so if havoc jumps out that window he's a dead man stun smoke doesn't exactly land the crossfire there there's going to be the first opening kill the bomb does go down however and here comes the exchange of gunfire in the middle of the map Mutiny is somewhat pinned in. They don't have too many angles to work with. It's going to be Skies to catch the flank if he can. Two kills go the way of the Mutineers. It's a very slow, but very powerful five-man push slowly, but surely awakening finds another one. It all comes down to Hollow in the one versus four. Frosty's already on the defuse, and that is why they are your back-to-back -back champions. I mean, it is tough for Optic. They were up 5-4 with their new roster. They were so close to clutching up. Couldn't make it happen. Florida wins. 3-2. So then we head into the Dallas versus New York match, which was the first match on Saturday, and we're all like, yo, this is going to be insane. We're all looking forward to this one. We're excited to see what New York and Dallas can do and how that's going to play out, and Dallas makes a statement. Dallas 3-0s him on Gunrunner, then Arklov, then Gunrunner, and uh, looked really, 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 really good overall. And after this match, I was like, wow, okay, Dallas is here to play this weekend. I had originally picked the Mutineers to win, but after this series, I was convinced Dallas was going to take that home. But I was excited to see what would happen in that type of matchup. So then the Mutineers faced off against London to punch their ticket to the semifinals. I think all of us were expecting the Mutineers to come out here and make a statement. But this was a surprise to be sure. Like in the first hard point on Cave, Florida absolutely dominated. And we were like, all right, uh, that makes sense. Then in the S&D on Piccadilly, Florida looked really, really good again. They shut down Wuskins took that map 6-3 and we're like okay here we go it's a 2-0 and then we're like maybe this is going to be a 3-0 because they're playing on Petrodom which literally Florida has been the best team in the whole league on Petrodom this season like something like something like 9-1 going into this match on Petrodom they have been no pun intended dominant on Petro and London makes the comeback here in this map to use that Uno reverse card on the momentum and really take it all in their favor and they ride that wave they beat Florida 250-207 in Gunrunner Hardpoint and then it comes down to the search and destroy on Arklov, where, where both teams have been really, really good. And London takes it 6-4 to knock the Mutineers down to loser, and for London to punch their ticket to the semifinals. Realistically, I just haven't had that much faith in London overall this season, the past, especially the past like two months. Scraps found his groove. He had a 1.23 on this event, and it was absolutely frying. And Zero definitely played well as well, like a 1.07 on the weekend. And that was why it all came together in that series to beat Florida 3-2. Just crazy stuff overall. So then we had some of those loser bracket matches where Paris beat LAG again, unfortunate for LAG. And then Optic beat Seattle and then, you know, ruined Seattle's hopes of rebounding after their tragic loss the day before. There was a lot of tweets this weekend from Slasher and from Optic as a whole about their connection, some during that Mutineers series about how they were really lagging really really bad kenny and slasher were lagging you know how it's been with optic and their connections this year it's been tough to say the least during these online matches but then we had probably the craziest match of the whole weekend because it was just so surprising it was paris versus new york and paris comes out with the hot 3-0 what like 
They 3-0'd New York? What, what is happening? The defending champions? How does this go down? So I think the hard point was what really kind of broke New York's spirits for whatever reason. It was a pretty deflating loss, I think, for New York overall. They could have easily won it at like multiple different points at the end there. And uh, they lost 250 to 242 right there on Ramaza. It was such a close map. And for some reason, it must have tilted them because then they go into the Petro. They lose 6-2 where, again, Paris looked awesome in Search and Destroy almost all of this weekend except against Dallas in the Grand Finals. Overall, Paris was playing fantastic Search and Destroy and just really, really impressive as a whole. And then they went to Gunrunner Dom and beat New York there as well. So Paris made a statement in this match where you're just like, wow, okay, they might be here to play. Like, this is some real Call of Duty right here. Where did this come from? And it set up their match against London in the Grand Finals. So then we so then we had that Optic versus Mutineers rematch. And of course, you know, Mutineers took care of business 1-3-1. And you get those slasher and Kenny tweets about lag and all those things. Overall, Optic, I mean, they probably looked a little bit better with Hollow and Draza. It is their first event. So, so hopefully they can find their groove this next week or so. Really hit their stride going into champs. I'm not feeling great about this roster at this point. It's not like it's some massive improvement for what they had before with Chino and with Dashi. I came out this weekend with a pretty meh feeling about Optic Gaming's new roster, and we'll definitely talk about that more in the podcast tomorrow. So on to the semifinals, Paris versus London. This series was just epic overall. It went to game five. London took a very competitive map one, Gunrunner Hardpoint. Then in map two, we went down to round 11, another epic one on Arklov this time. Let's check it out. It's actually Zed who managed to reference back and ground the bomb, and we actually could see the rotation over to B. This is London. They may actually get caught off guard by this. Let's get still with the sniper. He shuts down shocks in the meantime, but the bomb has rotated over toward B. They're going to be able to get this plant off, and Shawnee he's going to be able to give the call out. Let him know the site is clear. They get the indicator. Bomb planted at B. Zero. Shawnee and Wuskin. Can they get the three versus two retake? Let's get in from the top side. Looking to try to grab some visuals, but if you are Zed and Kismet, it's about back to back style. Can you keep it alive? Wuskin, he's over at the bar, but Kismet shuts him down. Two versus two now. Zero and Shawnee, time is starting to run away. Zero has to hop on the defuse, but Kismet is here. He finds the first and the Legion. So Paris takes that one. And then you move on to a Petro Dom, where again, London plays very, very well and smokes them there. Then you head to a Hackney Hardpoint where Paris has been pretty good this year. The beta will be their best Hardpoint year long. And then they won that one, 250-173. Looked really, really solid overall throughout that map. And then we went on to a Gunrunner Search and Destroy. Round 11 once again. This is what happened. In the position they were just a few months ago, a few weeks ago. Look at those round 11 stats. Preferred for the Legion without question. And look at this early plant. Kismet. Typing in the digits early, gets the bomb down, and now it's gonna be on the Ravens. 40 seconds left to work with, and this is gonna be a quick one. Zed, just around the corner, he wants to play patient. He doesn't want to give his position away, but who's gonna give their position out first? Den's with the nade, Zen, he's rather Zed with the kill. Wuskin, zero, they respond back with two of their own, and Wuskin, he has to hop in the corner. The smoke is out, the vision is blind. Kismet finds another, it's all on to zero, and Wuskin, and there goes zero. Takes down one. Also, Shark's on the rock. Manages to take down one as well. Time starting to tick away. And the Legion, they get it done. The Legion at the end. So once again, man, London chokes some s and that they, they easily could have won. And they once again just fall slightly short. It's just been the theme of London's season this whole year. What's a tournament without London, you know, just kind of blowing an s and and it's just been so unfortunate for the Royal Ravens all year long. So in the other semifinal match, one that a lot of people were looking forward to, it, it was Mutineers versus Empire. You see a lot of the, that beef and some of those jokes about Awakening from like Krim and Clay and how that's gone down. And then of course, Krim made his whole uh, Awakening, Awakening, you know, face tracker on his camera trick and everything else, which was hilarious. But this series was not close. I mean, it was a blowout all the way around. 250-164, 6-1 on Piccadilly, and then 176-152 on Hackney Dom. Nothing close there. And then, of course, at the end, Clay was just unloading clips into Awakening's body. Bruh, bruh. Come on now, man. I mean, it was funny. And I'm all about this. But Dallas looked amazing in this whole series. And they were was winning gunfight after gunfight after gunfight. And just 
trying. I mean, Krim had emphasized how much more time they had put into this. We really gave up Warzone the past few weeks to really focus on practice and getting better. And Krim looked amazing this weekend heading into the grand finals. And the story of the weekend, the grand finals weren't that close either. Dallas dominated undoubtedly the most dominant performance in a grand finals and in a home series the whole season. Statistically, they set a new record. They only lost one map this whole weekend, which was in their first series against Paris. So overall, Dallas just was lights out. And if you look at their stats individually this weekend, it's absolutely ridiculous. The worst KD on the team was Crim6 with a 1.15. Like what? That is pure domination and by far the best performance of any team statistically, especially in the, in the kill death ratio category that we've seen all season long. And you look at the stat sheet and it's almost all green, which means that they're in the top, you know, the top percentile of players in that category. Almost all green all the way through. Dallas absolutely fried. And Shotzi really helped himself in the MVP debate. Very, very possible that he could still win this MVP. With Dallas now winning three home series, I mean, Shotzi has a pretty freaking good argument at this point. How good he's been all year long. And he had a 1.29 KD this event. So he was absolutely frying. I mean, shout out to Paris. They were just definitely playing some good team Call of Duty this weekend. Definitely led by their S&D and how they played those S&Ds and clutched up in those big time moments. I mean, it was just really unfortunate for them. Clay even tweeted about it after the grand finals that it was pretty unfair for Paris because they were playing on Dallas servers against Dallas in the grand finals just because of how it plays out. So, you know, the LA Opti guys appreciated Clay for coming clean about that and how tough it can be to play against Dallas on Dallas servers. So, I mean, Slack literally tweeted before the series started like, yo, GG's, this is over, Paris lost. But I mean, at the end of the day, would it have even mattered if they were playing on better servers? Probably not. So on the podcast tomorrow, we'll be talking a lot about this upcoming event and how this past weekend affected the standings moving into this upcoming weekend. And then of course, COD champs in the next few weeks, which is going to be absolutely nuts with so much money on the line. So, so I cannot be more excited about the COD League right now. Really, really looking forward to it. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, like, comment, favorite, subscribe. I really do appreciate all the support. I'm trying this full time and I cannot do that without you guys. You know the spiel, but I really, really do appreciate it. But as always, guys, I'm your boy, Savage Elite, and we will see you next time. I'm out.